A fast and productive way of getting a production off the ground is by laying down the foundations with some drum loops. Later in the mix, you may find that some of the snare levels need to come up a bit in volume. Not an easy task when all the hit levels are baked into the waveform. You could, of course, play around with some multiband compression and EQ to help bring focus to certain hits. But these approaches don't always yield great results and often change the overall tonality and vibe of the loop. Now, the best way to increase the level of a snare in a sample is to isolate it. And for this, you'll need a sidechain technique. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up with this using Studio Rack's new internal routing feature, which enables you to not only increase the level of snare hits in samples, but also allows you to inject some creative effects to just the snare hits, which is a great way for producing bespoke sounding beats. Later in the video, I'll also show you how to set up a sidechain filter from scratch for use with any bus style compressor that doesn't have a sidechain filter built in. We'll also provide these Studio Rack workflows as free presets that you can download from the link below. Let's jump in. First, let's look at some of the key points you need to know about internal routing within Studio Rack. Now, you're not going to be able to engage any side chaining within the main plugin chainer here. Instead, you use either parallel or multiband splits. Let's go over parallel split to begin with, and we've got two racks loaded on default. Now, if we wanted to assign a sidechain from a compressor into an EQ, we'd need to load an EQ in the first rack, such as F6. And on the second rack, load a compressor that has the initials SC at the end of it, short for sidechain. At the top left of the compressor that has sidechain, you'll find this drop down menu with a handful of options, which enable us to assign the sidechain to the studio rack input, which is here before the trim, the parallel split input, which is this one here and rack one output, which in this case would be the F6 plugin we loaded just a moment ago. Once you've made your choice, you'll notice next to the SC drop down menu, a small yellow indicator appears that also shows down here in rack two, meaning we've got the side chain set up all correctly. So let's put this into practice and let me show you how you can use this to isolate elements within a drum loop, which will enable us to boost the level of the snare within this loop. Increase the level of the snare. It's normal level. Boost it again. Let me show you how to set this up. So we've got three parallel racks. The first rack has an EQ with low and high pass filters focusing very closely on just the snare drum. Let's listen to this rack in isolation quickly. Now the next parallel rack has a C1 gate. We have the side chain from this assigned to rack one output, being that instance of F6. And within this, I've got just the classic gate preset loaded. Back over on rack one, I'm just gonna bring the volume down on this because we don't need to hear it but C1 gate will because of the side chain. Let's have a listen to this rack. You can hear that's gating perfectly, just that snare. You need to make sure that you've got an appropriate threshold level, but you can play around with the hold and release times to lengthen the snare if you need to. Now you would have noticed that there's a bit of hi-hat also in that snare. A good way to reduce that is to insert an instance of Waves F6 Dynamic EQ after the gate, and grab a high shelf, bring the threshold and range down to make it dynamic. And we'll use this just to tame that top end where the hi-hats sit. Now for us to be able to increase the level of this isolated snare, we also need to be able to hear the original loop. And for this, we've got just a naked third parallel rack here that we need to engage. And with these two working together in parallel, all we need to do is increase the fader at the bottom of rack two to get a snare drum that comes forward in a mix. And this being studio rack, you can make this a little bit easier on yourself by assigning that to macro one and call this snare level. Let's jump back in the mix and hear how this sounds. Okay, let's increase the snare. Back 
it off. Increase it. Now with that workflow, you can go a few steps further if you wish by adding effects to that isolated snare. Now the foundation of this setup is exactly the same to the one I've just shown you. Instead, I've inserted a few stomp boxes and a reverb after the C1 gate and dynamic EQ that we've got taming the hi-hats. I've got these all bypassed, so they're all greyed out, which means I can quickly jump between them, engage them, have a listen and see what fits. I've got a wah, fuzz pedal, a buzz pedal, the metal stump, doubler, and the Renaissance reverb plates. Let's play back that track again and have a little listen to each of these effects on that isolated snare. Let's try some wah. With some fuzz. Fuzz and buzz. Buzz in the metal stomp. With a bit of reverb. And the doubler. Now let's look at another way that you can use side chaining within Studio Rack. And that's for creating a side chain filter for compressor plugins that don't have one built in. Now there are loads of compressors out there that have some form of high pass sidechain filter built in, such as the Abbey Road RS124. And we use these to determine a frequency range for the compressor to respond to. These help us to reduce excessive pumping artifacts that are caused by strong low end energy and are typically used in mix bus or mastering applications where transparent glue like compression is needed. Now for this mix, let's say I want to finish it off with a bit of bus compression using this, the SSL G Master Bus Compressor. It's a great sounding bus compressor, but it hasn't got a sidechain filter built in, which means if you push it a bit too hard, especially on a track like this, that's got a lot of subby kick and low ends, the compression is just going to sound really pumpy like this. just sucks the life out of the music. Now this is where we can use the internal side chaining within Studio Rack to make a side chain filter for the SSL bus compressor to respond to. Now on the first rack, we have an EQ. We've got a high pass filter set here. Now what I'm gonna do first is send the frequency position control of this high pass filter to the first macro. So I don't need to look in this plugin anymore. I can control that from here, which we can see if we move that about, that controls that there. Back over in Studio Rack, we have on our second parallel rack, obviously the SSL compressor there. And in the sidechain drop down menu, we select rack one and make sure that either the level control is all the way down or that the rack is off. The whole point of this rack, rack one, as was with the previous rack that I showed you for isolating snares, this is just for the purposes of this rack to listen to. And if we go back into the compressor, you'll notice that the needle will only jump when it hears the snare. But more importantly, the behavior of the compression won't sound pumpy, it will sound transparent and glue-like. If you want to learn more sidechain workflows, check out our free deep dive tutorial here in which we show you five powerful ways to use sidechain compression in a mix. Most of those techniques easily transfer to Studio Rack's new internal routing, which lets you create and share really elaborate plugin chains and sidechain production techniques between different DAWs.